Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dwight Fish and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees of this congregation. Welcome to you all. The Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Elkhart is a welcoming community encouraging religious freedom, nurturing individual spiritual and ethical growth, celebrating diversity and promoting a just and sustainable world. If you would like to learn more about this fellowship, please look at our website at uufe.org and join us after the service for our coffee hour in the gathering space. For the listening enjoyment of all, we ask that you at this time please turn off your cell phones and pagers. Also, if you need hearing support, please ask at the sound desk. And thank you very much. Welcome. stuffy sleepover. Well, the little guys at our house have been lobbying for another one, and they've said, let's make it a sleepover or a camp out. So Mike and I have agreed to host one on the night of Saturday, June 18th. So get one or two of your BSFs, that's best stuffy friends, to the church before Friday the 17th. We will be able to return them well-rested and without bug bites, I'm sure, after church that Sunday. I'm happy to announce that we have a second Lego buddy to help out when we have youngsters to accompany their parents here to church. But we need another one or two to make sure that someone is always available to help our youngsters have fun. If you can do this on an occasional basis, please talk to me during coffee hour or email me this week. The meditation group will reconvene next Sunday after church at 11.45. The group will meet every Sunday except for the third Sundays, of which of course is potluck. Science and Society will meet at 2 p.m. on June 13th in the gathering place to, to continue a discussion of genes and DNA. A couple of events are coming up in June. The first is the Moral March on Washington, which is scheduled for June 18th. Bus transportation is available, so Google Moral, uh, yeah, Google Moral March or the People for People's Campaign for more information. The second event, of course, is the UUA General Assembly. Um, where am I? Okay. And registration, I don't think, is closed yet. There's more information on the, the UUA website for attendance both in Portland, Oregon, or online. And I believe we still need two delegates for the conference, so let Carl Rust and Ken Claiborne know that you are interested. As we all know, it is time to do some home maintenance, and it's time to do some church maintenance as well. If you can help with gardening or minor building repairs, speak with Mike Darnell. There's more information in the forthcoming focus. If you are very interested in helping, there's a building and grounds committee meeting at 9 a.m. next Sunday in the archive room next door in the Learning Center. Uh, and Mike says that if you would like to rescue some of the plants in the uh, parking lot mediums, to uh, talk to him. So, because uh, they're going to be starting to dig things up this coming week. Mary Adams is organizing a second Euchre Club, so if you have a card table to spare, Contact her to arrange that your contribution. And Chalice Sparks, a UU camp for all ages, will be held at Camp Friedenwald near Casablas from July 8th to 10th. More information is available on Ivy Island. Last week found $114 in a collection plate to share with the Boys and Girls Club of Goshen. This week's offering will be shared with Church Community Services. Thank you.
seeking a wholeness that extends beyond ourselves. three times. Once for those, uh, let's see, I can't do this from memory. I'm sorry. Once for those who came before us. We'll all do it together. Once for those who are here now.
Good morning. My name is the Reverend Sharon Dittmar, and I want to share with you one of my favorite readings, Wild Geese, by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again, whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. I have one foot larger than the other one. Actually, most of us do. You really aren't imagining it. You go to the shoe store, your left shoe fits, but the right one feels small. You wonder if the small one will stretch. You wonder what is wrong with the shoe. It's not the shoes. It's the feet, our feet. They're not the same size. Human bodies are not symmetrical. Human minds are not perfect, infallible. We are all in process, being conditioned in our conditions to a condition. We are wholly human in a dazzling continuum of being and mortality. As a guest minister, I once preached a sermon entitled, Dare to be Average. After the service, one man came up to me and wanted, needed, I would even go so far as to say, to argue with me that average was not commendable. It was not good. Where was my spirit of achievement, he asked. Where was my value for success? Where were my standards? Obviously, my sermon on the impossibility of perfection and the value of average had fallen short. I went home content. Our bodies are full of difference and they continue to grow and change with age, time, and life. If we live long enough, there will be many adaptations, medications, therapy, perhaps even surgery needed for accident, injury, wear and tear. Our bodies are extraordinary in their divergence and beauty. The myth is that there is one standard of health, beauty, normalcy. The myth is that there is something better than average. It is the idea of normal that I find particularly frustrating, as is I think our limited understanding of average. Couldn't average just be the all of everything, that that is average and normal? I have a friend who was born with spina bifida. Her spinal cord developed so that it did not close to the open air and was exposed then. I am sure her medical diagnosis at the time was full of words such as did not develop properly or normally, was not average, etc. But neither of those words proper or normal are factually true. Bodies develop in a myriad of ways. There is no proper, this is not setting a table. And as for normal, if spina bifida is a condition that happens and it is, then it's normal, it's normal. Due to spina bifida, my friend uses a wheelchair, which is also normal. This problem is with 
society and the medical profession when it chooses to see any condition as abnormal. What if we lived in a society where we celebrated and designed for all variations and considered all of the variations average? The human condition includes a vast continuum of everything. It is only limited by our imagination and narration, the story we tell ourselves about ourselves. There are a lot of different sized feet out there, a lot of unavailable organs, missing hair, extra hair, different shaped bodies, different functioning brains. This is not a matter of perfection or failure because failure and perfection, they're, they're relative, limited notions and just small parts of the all of human condition. We are so much broader and diverse than we know. And as the Mid-America Regional Assembly keynote speaker for 2022, C.B. Beal, who describes themselves as a white, fat, queer, non-binary, religious, and social justice educator likes to say, everybody is already in the room. Whether we know it or not, everybody is already in the room because everything happens. Beale reminds us we are only limited by our notions of what is normative and our deceptions about our beautiful variety. I hope you will register for our assembly at www.uua.org slash midamerica slash RA slash 2022 to join the conversation on April 30th and learn more. Beale's comments remind me of the movie Sound of Metal about a heavy metal drummer played by the actor Riz Ahmed who goes deaf. The character he plays, Ruben, struggles with his growing deafness. With all his might, he fights himself and in the process he makes himself sick, isolated and miserable. In the movie, we journey actually with Ruben as his body changes and he learns new ways of communicating and living in silence finally celebrating the peace it brings, which is the peace he discovers by embracing his body as it is, as he finds it, instead of it forcing it into the shape it once had. What if there's not a normal body, not a perfect body, not a proper body? What if all bodies are extraordinary and miraculous variations and our work in society and as neighbors to one another is to find ways to embrace, assist and include everyone? Some of you might have heard of the concept of universal design, designing products, buildings and experiences so that they're accessible to everyone. Universal design relies on the theory that everybody is already in the room or on the street or in the home. So how do we design for everyone? There are curb cuts, for example, on streets to make it easier for strollers and wheelchairs and walkers. There's live transcription and Zoom rooms so that text can appear on the screen as a person speaks. In many ways, we are in the infancy of understanding universal design as a society. And so we're still learning. I know I am. It has taken me years to remember to enable live transcription. It's a little button at the bottom of your Zoom page if you're the host. It is new for me to ask questions and be curious about universal design. Questions like, how can I design a class to include the most people? Or what about this experience excludes somebody and what could be done to change that? And in including the most people, I'm not going for numbers, I'm going for the most diversity that will be in the room because everybody's always already in the room. These questions are more like conversations with continual learning. I'm not perfect in this work. I am extremely normal in this work because I'm human. I just try to learn because I care about all my neighbors and I will be learning about and trying to practice universal design until the day I die. It is a journey, not a destination. And I'm actually grateful, very grateful to be on this journey. For me, it's a way to live my values. 
I recently spoke to a disability activist who wistfully wondered when people would just accept their human bodies as they are. This got me to wondering about how much I accept and celebrate my body just as it is. Truth be told, I'm doing a very moderate and maybe poor job at this, which is of course very human. I'm still wrestling with my newly gray hair, my wrinkles, my changing body, just as Ruben wrestled in the sound of metal. Though since these changes do not involve my livelihood, I'm having an easier time than he was. I do though see myself struggling to celebrate the changes and where I find myself now. Sometimes I think of myself as old and not in a celebratory way, which I could choose to do. It is almost like in thinking about old as negative, I am creating and participating in a limited narrative and falling into that old habit, old familiar habit of conceiving problems about something extremely normal and natural. Instead of complaining about my wrinkles or trying to hide them, what if I celebrated my journey of life? All the time I spent thinking about myself as too old, I could be celebrating or reviewing or looking back to decide how I wanna be in the present moment. I am who I am. I'm 55 years old. There are many sunrises and sunsets, many adventures, stories in these lines, and they also provide me definition for who I wanna be right now today. For me as a white woman with privilege, I risk invisibility in our youth focused society. Though I must say, truly our youth don't want all the attention they get. I know I sure did not as a young person. And yet for other people with a variety of abilities and identities, say an elderly black disabled woman in a wheelchair, the gauntlet of societal perception includes invisibility, ignorance, multiple microaggressions and discriminations. What if we could just break away from right body, wrong body, perfect anything and just be, just be in love, just be curious, just appreciate and just blessedly adapt. The poet Mary Oliver writes, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair yours and I will tell you mine. I wish so much in this world that we could appreciate one another beyond just form and diagnoses, which can never fully describe the complexity, the moving beauty of every human story in life. No one here is just the sum of their diagnosis or form. For that and so much more. I remember reading the book by clinical psychologist Annie Rogers, A Shining Affliction, A Story of Harm and Healing in Psychotherapy. It's really a remarkable and unique story about a woman who ended up teaching at Harvard. And I looked her up for the sermon. She's now teaching at Ham Ham um, Hampshire College in Massachusetts. It's just tremendous what she shares, which is a rare truth in a world that likes to have secrets. Annie begins her story with a description of her doctoral clinical internship at a site for emotionally disturbed children. She works with several children, but it is immediately drawn to one child in particular, Ben, who's about five years old. As she describes several play therapy sessions with Ben, we discover that he was a severely abused child left alone in a room until he was 18 months of life. He now lives with a loving adoptive family, but bears obviously the scars from his early years. And the scars are inside him and not visible to anyone on the outside. Ben is never a diagnosis though to Annie. So he is never a diagnosis for us, the reader. Annie is driven to uncover what is inside this bright, creative, hurt boy, what his story means to him and to find a way to help him bridge into a good and loving world and family that waits for him. For the first time in his young life, Ben finally connects to someone who is Annie and their play therapy is beautiful and magical. As the reader, we think this story is just gonna be about Ben, right? 
until Annie has a severe breakdown and is hospitalized. Her fall is intense, as are the repressed memories she recovers that render her unable to speak for a time. At one point, as Annie begins to move forward with a good therapist, she asks, do you think I will ever be cured? After laughing quite some time, the therapist replies, Annie, only Ham gets cured. There is no cure. There is no cure for being who we are. Only living, loving, getting help with people who support us and celebrating the human condition. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you have a place in the family of things, just as you are, normal, varied, and beautiful in your own way. Celebrate yourself and your loved ones in your infinite beauty and mystery. May it always be so.
whenever I read the benediction, I'm going to apologize. These sermons come out on a monthly basis, but we don't always use them in the month that they come out. So we miss all of that that she wanted to do on April 30th. Yeah. I also want to thank Chuck Bauer. He was kind enough, even though he's not here. He printed all the orders of service. He printed the chalice lighting. He printed the benediction. He made arrangements with Lizzie to get all of the hymns. And so as a member of the Worship Arts um, Committee, he did a, a marvelous job. And I wanted to say thank you for him. Um, the closing words today are, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no person, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. And honor all persons. Blessed be, namaste, amen.